Reviewing the new album from Denzel Curry, King of the Mischievous Self 2. Denzel Curry has been a mainstay in hip-hop for many years now, starting from the Raider Clan Collective in the early 2010s and a part of the iconic 2016 XSL Freshman cover. Denzel Curry has been consistently relevant but also underrated in my opinion. Especially when looking at the 2016 cover, I think that many casuals would say that Denzel Curry is not a part of what makes that list the best of all time. Most would say Uzi, Yachty, 21 Savage, Kodak, and G Herbo. But those who have really been paying attention will recognize that Denzel Curry is just as important to the greatness of that cover as those other artists. With KOTMS2, Denzel Curry takes a sonic and thematic journey back to his beginnings with his first project from 2012 in Raider Clan Days. By putting together a project that may not have the commercial or single success of previous efforts like Taboo or Melt My Eyes, but easily holds up in overall quality in my opinion, as KOTMS2 pays homage to the old and new players of Southern Rap. The project opens up with an intro from Memphis rap pioneer King Pimp Skinny Pimp, setting the stage for the return to the heavy 3-6 Mafia influence that was a major part of Raider Clan in the original KOTMS. It leads into Ultra Shit, where former Raider Clan member Kini Yada and Denzel go back and forth over a dark and scary piano 3-6 Mafia type beat, easily one of my favorite records, if not my favorite, on the whole project. Set It, Hot One, and Black Flag are fusions of the old school Southern Memphis production, with features from the newest players in the Southern rap scene, with Max Cream on Set It, Tia Corinne on Hot One, and that Mexican OT on Black Flag. Of these three, I would say that the energy of the single Hot One is my favorite, and still one of my favorite singles of the year so far, followed by the fire lyricism from both rappers on Black Flag, then the cool flows on Set It. G's Up with the Legend 2 Chains and Texas newcomer Mike Dimes is probably the only real issue I have with the project, and it's only the repetitive chorus, just a bit annoying to me, but I still like the song overall, especially 2 Chains verse. I enjoy the single Scared a lot more in the context of the album, another dope merging of the old and new southern rap with Kenny Mason and Project Pat. I don't think I could ever get tired of Project Pat's voice or flow, it's just timeless in my opinion no matter how many times I've heard it or other people try to do it. Then comes Cole Pimp with Ty Dolla Sign and Juicy J. It's a dope switch up content and production wise from the aggression of the previous tracks. Ty Dolla Sign only makes records better, and this classic 2010s combo of him and Juicy J can't go wrong and it doesn't. Then comes Wishlist featuring Armani White. It's a part of the change to the most soulful production and pimp content along with Cole Pimp. Then the album ends extremely hard with likely my second favorite song on the album, uh, Hit the Floor. A hard ass distorted trap banger with one of the best to do it from that 2017 era scheme as a sum god. This one is for cardio, it's for the mosh pits, it's too hard. Then the project ends similarly to the way that it started with Hoodlums featuring Play That Boy Zay and ASAP Rocky. Having one of the greatest to do that 3-6 sound from the 2010s and a leader of the Northern Counterparts of Raider Clan rounded out the album and concluded a project that I loved in a fire ass way. Overall, I'm very high on this album and it's likely going to be one of my faves for the year. Rating Denzel Curry's King of the Mischievous South 2 a 9.1 out of 10. Crack rock.